Uh, yes, I'm ready to start. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is uh, Daniel Thomas. I live in Dallas, Texas, and I'm an Eagle Scout. And uh, over the last five years of mobilized community members, city departments, and schools to protect our waterways and the spring life, I've done this through educational programs such as podcasts, YouTube videos, and I've also written three books in addition to litter cleanups and advocating at local and state levels for the protection of our marine life. Um, we have successfully kept 34,000 pounds of trash from our Texas waterways and also generated about 4,500 volunteer hours. And now I would like to present a video uh, basically recapping my project. Thank you. Hi, my name is Daniel Thomas, and I live in Colleyville, Texas. Today, I would like to talk to you about my Messenger of Peace projects, inspired by Scouts, Community Outreach, and Civic Engagement. I started two organizations, Litter Scout and... Sorry about that. Give me one second. ...say thank you, which allow Scouts and community members to give back to the community. You are not a drop in the ocean. You are the entire ocean in a drop. As a scout, my journey began. In fifth grade, I had a plan to earn some service hours and beautify parks with all my powers. I volunteered with Keep Texas Beautiful in Grapevine where it was dutiful to plant the prairie grass and pick up the litter and to make our parks much neater and fitter. Through Environmental Science Merit Badge, I learned about environmental damage. I saw the need for my project to act to keep our waterways clean and intact. Most parks are by creeks and streams, where litter ends up and it seems to harm marine life, causing distress and making their environment a mess. So I rallied friends and volunteers to clean up parks and end our fears. With savings of 300 bucks, I bought buckets, vests, and grabbers, no mucks. We focused on small groups to preserve and tackle small areas so clear. We achieved big results like large cleanups and had higher volunteer rate. Thumbs up. To encourage more to lend a hand, I made presentations that were grand. To schools, scout groups, and youth groups too, 
I taught 530 kids conservation anew. Next, I made videos to share, to reach more kids and show we care, making them have challenges, but it's okay, to share what we know and make others sway. My mom loves podcasts, so I thought, why not? Spread knowledge with speed, and I do it a lot. So I made a podcast and a blog that's neat, available to all with no need to retreat. I needed a centralized location to store all my media with dedication. So I created LitterScout.com through trial and error, and now it's the bomb. My podcast and blogs had many views, over 1,600 downloads, it's not a ruse. My YouTube videos had over 10,000 views, 590 subscribers, it's truly outstanding news. I wrote a book for kids, Sustainable Living, It's What It Bids, to teach them how to make a difference with individual actions and persistence. I had to figure out litter hotspots and how much litter to clean up in lots, so I created an iOS Android app called Litter Scouts to help clean up the food wrap. To expand and reach out to our educational side, I made an Alexa skill that's worldwide. Sustainable living gives daily tips and facts to reduce our carbon impact and avoid the axe. Uh, thank you all. I'll now uh, pass it on to uh, Mason. All right, thank you, Daniel. Um, I'll introduce myself. Um, my name's Mason Schlafer. Um, I'm an Eagle Scout from Troop 1053, and I live in Michigan, United States, and I also have a video to uh, uh, represent my project, so um, let me present that now. Hello, my name is Mason Schlafer, and I'm an Eagle Scout from Troop 1053 in Norton Shores, Michigan, United States. Today, I'll be discussing my Messengers of Peace service project. To provide some background, Messengers of Peace is an international scouting program. It is split into three main levels, award, champion, and ambassador. However, there are additional levels, such as distinguished service and hero, that recognize exemplary projects that have had a great impact. Each level revolves around service projects conducted to address a variety of problems within communities. Messengers of Peace has adopted the Sustainable Development Goals originally created by the United Nations in 2015. There are 17 of them, each addressing a key issue in society that calls for action in order to be solved in the future. They read as follows. No poverty, zero hunger, good health and well-being, quality education, gender equality, clean water and sanitation, affordable and clean energy, decent work and economic growth, industry, innovation, and infrastructure, reduced inequalities, sustainable cities and communities, responsible consumption and production, climate action, life below water, life on land, peace, justice, and strong institutions, and partnerships for the goals. My project specifically addresses both goal number two, zero hunger, and number 17, partnerships for the goals. Let me explain how. First, my project addresses zero hunger by providing free food to individuals and their families who are in need of it. In my area, this is a big issue. According to statistics from our local United Way, 42% of Muskegon families are below the Alice threshold, the minimum income necessary for general survival in a household. Additional statistics show that 14% of that population is living in poverty. 29.6% of Muskegon children receive federal food assistance, as well as 64% apply for free or reduced price school lunches. These numbers indicate a severe problem of hunger within my community. This is a large task to take on alone, and I definitely would not have been able to achieve goal number two without number 17. I have partnered with multiple organizations in order to execute this project well. 
First, I partnered with Feeding America, a nonprofit food bank network that has grown to become one of the largest charities in the U.S. since its inception in 1979. They are not only able to source nutritious meals and food, but bring them to food truck events for distribution as well. Second, I partnered with Muskegon County Cooperating Churches. Their organization also does food trucks around Muskegon County, so they are experienced in that regard. They are responsible for promoting these events to food recipients online, as well as bringing a trailer for materials we need, such as tables, bags, and cleaning supplies. Third, I partnered with St. Gregory's Episcopal Church, my troop's charter organization. They were chosen in order to provide a physical location to host these events. With the church being nearby, it provides a place close to home that allows us to have a profound impact on those in need within our own community. Finally, I partnered with my home scout troop, 1053, in order to provide the workforce of volunteers. Over the years, I've been able to recruit scouts and scouters to help out at every single truck, as well as other friends and family members who come and help too. Feeding America food trucks work like this. An event starts by unloading food from the truck, putting each group of foods into a row of tables, similar to an assembly line. Most of the time, there are one or two things that have to be individually bagged. Once everything is organized into boxes, the process truly begins, allowing recipients to go through the line and take their food. Meanwhile, most volunteers are either cleaning up or continuing to fill new boxes and sliding them down the line. For recipients, individuals, and families are able to come to the event, sign up with the cooperating church's coordinators, and wait in line to receive their free food. It mainly works in drive through fashion, where cars line up in the parking lot and a group of volunteers at the end of the tables load the cars, but walk-ups are also an opportunity. Starting in December of 2018, these collaborations have allowed me to conduct 32 food trucks so far, with one more in 2023 and 12 coming in 2024. With over 1,500 collective service hours among volunteers, we have been able to create a huge impact locally. Over 10,000 people have been fed through the food trucks, providing over 160,000 pounds of food to them. As you can see from some of the pictures, we've been working every season of the year. While some days it's hot and sunny, others it's cold and snow is coming down pretty hard. I think that this is a perfect representation of the year-round problem that many unfortunately are not able to afford the food that they need to live. This is exactly the problem that my project hopefully will continue to address in the future. I hope this example of my Messengers of Peace project inspires you to not only learn more about the program itself, but also take action in your own community to solve food insecurity. Thank you for your time. Okay, um, so that was my video and um, I made that in November of 2023. Um, so I'd just like to provide some uh, updated statistics uh, for right now. So um, since December 2018, um, I've now done uh, 42 food trucks so far with 12 more this year, or sorry, uh, three more this year. Um, and with nearly uh, 2,100 collective service hours from our volunteers, we've been able to feed about 15,000 people locally with oh, about uh, 210,000 pounds of food. So I just thought I'd throw that in there as well. So do we want to open up for Q&A now? Uh, I think you should show the code, I think. Yeah, sorry about that. Um, okay, I'm going to screen share again for the challenge code that can be used. Uh, one second. Okay. Um, here's the challenge code on the screen. And I'll just leave that there um, for a minute, I guess, just so everybody can get that in there for the points.
I'll leave that up there for like another 30 seconds. Just anybody still wanting to use that? Okay. Um, if you didn't catch it, I'm going to put it in the chat right now. If you want to use that challenge code. And there it is.